Megan, good to see you today. That's it. We're going to continue our study on the kingdom of God, and probably we'll wind it up today. There's so much more we could say about it, but, uh, and I'm sure it'll come up uh, from time to time. I want to define kingdom. I looked at it, as I looked it up uh, in my research, a kingdom or a government or a country headed by is a is headed by a king or queen. That's one that's one answer for a kingdom. Another answer uh, it said it's also a realm. We can call it a realm in the spirit. Number three, it's one of several objects that have been classified as, like a mineral kingdom, a plant kingdom, an animal kingdom, and so forth. Now, the United States is not a kingdom. It's a republic. A republic is a state or nation in which the supreme powers rest on all citizens entitled to vote and is exercised by representatives elected by the people. That's where we get the term Republican. This is why so many people get upset by any president who constantly makes executive orders. That's not the Republic way of doing that. That's going outside of our Republic. Now, we also uh, live in a democracy, and that's where you get Democrats. Well, there's some difference, but anyway, I, I want to say, I like to say this, that's why it's so difficult for us United States citizens to understand how the kingdom works. If we lived in England, South Africa, or a lot of those other places where they have a commonwealth or a kingdom, it would be much easier to preach this and people understand it. So we're, we're trying to, to teach what a kingdom is and to know what it is, we've got to know what it is not first. Romans 14, 17 says, uh, a kingdom, the kingdom of God is not. Anybody remember what it's not? Meat and drink. Or it's not meat offerings and drink offerings as the Jewish nation was used to. But it is righteousness, peace, and what? Joy, Joy in the Holy Ghost. That's a kingdom. That's uh, uh, where the kingdom of God works. Uh, Luke chapter 17, let's just go there for starters. Luke 17, verse 20 and 21. It says, And when he was demanded of the Pharisees, who was he demanded by? The Pharisees. When the kingdom of God should come. This has been a great question. Even in, in a lot of evangelicals today, uh, when is the kingdom of God going to be set up? When is it going to start? When is Jesus going to come in the clouds of heaven and set his feet on the Mount of Olives? And when is he going to start the kingdom? The kingdom of God is already started. It's already in, it's already active. It's, it's already active. Now, you may not see it, especially if you watch the news. You have reasons to doubt. Amen? I do. I have a lot of reasons to doubt. But I have to go back to the scriptures and see what the scripture says. And I have to lean heavy on that rather than what I see. Because what I see is going to create doubt. Is that the same with you all? But we got to know, as we would say down in our knower, what the Bible says the kingdom is. It says, when the fair, and when he was demanded to the Pharisees, when the kingdom of God should come, he answered them and said, The kingdom of God cometh not with observation. It don't come with something you can see. And the concordance, I looked the word observation up, and it said ocular evidence. In other words, uh, uh, what's those optical lens in an instrument that you really look at something precisely that you can't see it that way. It's not something you see. Now sometimes we can see the evidence. Right? Yes. We see the evidence. But we can't actually see the kingdom in operation. We have no president. We have no vice president. 
We have no capital city because the Bible teaches us you are the city of God. You are the house of God. Many things it says you are. You are the army of God. You are the house of God. You are, you know, God lives in you. That's where he set up his, his residence or his, uh, his meeting place is within the hearts of men. Notice Jesus said, Neither shall they say, Lo, here, lo, there, for behold, the kingdom of God is where? It's in within you. Can you see above this board, y'all back there? There's a board in the way. Okay. The kingdom of God is where? Within you. Where we at there? Verse 21. Luke 17. Luke 17. Luke, uh, 17. I'm 17. sorry. Luke chapter 17. Chapter 17. Okay. 21. You need a little flashlight back there to you can flash at me when I'm not very clear. <laughs> Okay. Yeah. Neither say, shall they say, Lo, here or Lo, there. For behold, look, stop, look, and see. You know the word behold. What, what do you say if you pull out on a scenic place and you look at the all the, the view of a place in Tennessee? We go, look out mountain, you see seven states. Man, you say, Man, what a sight to behold. What a sight to behold. I say, Behold. In other words, stop, look, and listen now. The kingdom of God. It's where? Within you. That's about as plain as it needs to be. Right? Amen. The kingdom of God is within you. It's not established on any certain nation or hill or town or country. It's established in people. Hallelujah. So, in Matthew chapter 3, and we're going to kind of do a little uh, safari through Matthew today. Matthew chapter 3, verses 1 and 2. Hallelujah. Chapter 3. In those days, verse 1, came John the Baptist preaching in the wilderness of Judea and saying, What did he say? Repent. What do we learn? Repent is? Change your mind. Sometimes it takes a lot of work of God in us for us to change our, our mind, doesn't it? There's some people who just, they're just so forward bent, you couldn't get them to change for nothing to dodge. And vice versa. <laughs> you got guys in the trucking industry that are set on certain motors. You couldn't get them to change, I don't care if the motor, how many times it broke down, they're going to be cat people or coming people or whatever. But repenting is changing your mind. It's, and John came preaching in the wilderness of Judea, and he's saying, Repent, for the kingdom of God is where? At hand. At hand. Now, I look at that word hand up. You know, sometimes we just read through things. I don't know about you, but I do. I've read through things, and what does it mean, the kingdom of God is at hand? Does that mean out there in the street? Does that mean tomorrow? Does that mean 2,000 years from now? What does it mean? And to give me two words, I believe it's two words, I got the definition of it. Yeah. Near and squeeze. I've got to be pretty close to Micah to squeeze. He said, John said, repent, for the kingdom of God is right here. It's now. It's right here. It's now. Now, in the fourth chapter, we're up close there. Verse 12. Now when Jesus had heard that John was cast in prison, he departed into Galilee. Now he had just been tempted of the devil in the wilderness. Remember, he has not been crucified yet. He had been tempted and, and uh, several times and Jesus always come back with the scriptures and, and uh, the Bible says and when he, uh, the devil leaveth him, behold, the angels came and ministered to him. If you'll stick with the scriptures, I guarantee in a time of testing and trial, there'll be a time that the Spirit of God will minister to you in some way. It may be through something, a phone call. It may be through a message a preacher preaches. It might be a song that's sung two weeks later. But there will be some kind of confirmation or some kind of a ministry that will minister to you. So, you know, I did it right. I made the right decision. So what? Uh, <laughs> now, after Jesus had left all that, he heard that John was cast in prison and he parted from Galilee. And leaving Nazareth, he came and dwelt in Capernaum, 
which is upon the sea coast in the border of Zebulon and Nephthalim, that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet, saying, the prophet prophesied this, the land of Zebulun and the land of Nephthalim, by the way of the sea beyond the Jordan, Galilee of the Gentile, the people which sat in darkness saw what? Great and to them that sat in the region and shadow of death, what happened to them? Light sprung up. Okay. From that time, Jesus began to preach and to say, what did he say? Repent, change your mind for what? The kingdom of heaven is where? At hand. It's not 2,000 years from now. It's at hand. All right. Let's, let's go to Matthew chapter 9. Matthew chapter 9, verse 35. And Jesus went about all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues and preaching the what? Gospel. The gospel. What does gospel mean? Good news of the kingdom and healing every sickness and every disease among the people. But when he saw the multitude, he was moved with compassion on them because they fainted. They were scattered abroad as sheep having no shepherd. Then, then says he unto his disciples, The harvest truly is plenteous, but the laborers are what? Ye pray ye therefore, the Lord of the harvest, that he will send, them, send forth laborers into the harvest. Verse chapter 10. And when he had called unto him his twelve disciples, he gave them power against what? Unclean spirits, to cast them out and to heal all manner of sickness and all manner of disease. Now, I'm not against casting out spirits. But I'm telling you, you don't see much of that after the resurrection. Because in John 12, 31, Jesus said, Now is the prince of this world cast out. Now is the, what? Judgment? That's not the word. Now is the... Go to John 12, John 12, 31. Let's speak, John. John 12. I want to get that correct. John 12, verse 31. All right. Now is the judgment of this world. I did that right. Now is the judgment of this world. Now, not tomorrow. But now the prince of this world be toned down a little bit. Uh, just made a little more inferior. Uh, what's it say? He'll be what? Cast out. Doesn't mean he won't exist, but he has lost his place of power. I looked up the word prince, and it says the first in order, or first in rank. And when Adam sinned, that's what the prince of this world, or the devil, became, had the power that Adam had. But now Jesus says, now is the judgment of this world. Jesus took what I did, or what I was capable of doing, and he took it to the cross. He took what you did, even though you weren't even born yet. He took the past, the present, and the future, sin of the world upon himself, was beaten first, quit. And the, and the Bible says the stripes they put on him was for the healing of the nation. The healing, his, the stripes were for the healing of the nation. So, he, he provided our healing even before he was crucified. <laughs> then he was crucified, and before he was crucified, he says, now is the judgment of this world. Now shall the prince of this world be cast out. Now the only time the prince of this world has any power is the power that you give him and it's the power of God. So in that sense, we have become, uh, we have, um, the word is uh, perverted. We have perverted the power of God. The devil didn't do it, we did it. We did it. So he has no power of his own according to this. Now, do we need 15 other scriptures, or do we, you know, now is the prince of this world cast out? That's good enough for me. Now let's go to, uh, back to uh, uh, 10th chapter of Matthew. Now the names of the 12 disciples are these, and he lists them. Let's jump 
but we don't need to name them. Let's jump down to verse 5. Matthew 10, verse 5. Then twelve disciples, then twelve, these twelve Jesus sent forth and commanded them, saying, Go ye into all the world of the go ye into the way of the Gentiles and into the city. Huh? Go not into the way of the Gentiles and, and in and into any city of the Samaritans and are you not. But rather go to who? The lost. the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Why? Because the Israelites at that time is still trying to function under the law. Jesus came to change that. That's why he said repent. In other words, change your mind. It's a new covenant. He Hebrews says he took away the old to establish the new. Okay? And he says, as you go preach saying, the kingdom of heaven is where? It's at hand. Heal the sick, cleanse the leper, raise the dead, cast out devils, freely you have received, so freely what? Yes. Yeah. Freely give. Okay. Matthew chapter 13. Matthew chapter 13. Let's look at verse 31. <coughs> Another parable put he forth unto them, saying, The kingdom of God is like. I want to stop right there just a minute, and I want to write something on the board. If you want to write this somewhere in your Bible, you can. the concordance says the parable is a what? A fictitious narrative of common life conveying a moral or adage. I'll say it again. Now, together. The parable is a fictitious narrative of common life conveying a moral or adage. What is the word fictitious? What's, it, what's the, the root of that? Fiction. So it's not something that's true. I tell the story sometimes, with, with, and I've told you this a lot of times, but it comes to my attention right now. Especially with Emmy. I'd say, she'd say, crawl up on my lap and say, Grandpa, tell me a story. And I'd start telling about how she was born, but I'd never call her name. And I'd say, you know, those, these, these people had this little baby one time, and, and they weren't able to keep this baby. And, I just go through the story about her. I get about two thirds through it, but I'd almost through the whole story. And she looked up at me and she said, Grandpa, you're talking about me, ain't you? And I said, I am. Well, after that, I didn't get very far into the story. I'd have to, have to put a lot more pieces in it to make it more a bigger story. But I didn't get very far, and she had already figured out it was her. Or sometimes I'd talk about Jesus, and I'd say, This baby is this. People was having this baby and left. There wasn't no place in the motel. And, you know, and I'd tell all that story. She'd say, you're talking about Jesus, ain't you? Okay. So, a parable is a fictitious narrative of common life. It's something that you can understand. Conveying a moral or an adage. Does anybody know what an adage is? What's that? 
<laughs> that couldn't be it. I'll tell you one. Here's one thing all. If I said this to you all, I wouldn't have to explain it. But I said this to Oxana, and she had no clue what I meant. I just used it to show her. You wouldn't know what it meant. John kicked the bucket last night. Now, if, he, if John was my relative or a close friend, I wouldn't be that loose about it. I'd say he died. Mm -hmm. If there's somebody in the news that we know, I'd say, if I said John kicked the bucket last night, how many know what I would be saying? What would I be saying? Tim, what would I be saying? That he died. He died. That's common knowledge, common life. We all understand that. That's an adage. I, I told him this morning, I said, what's another one? And we let, you got one, David? Out of sight, out of mind, okay. I, I said, Linda, what's another one? There's a preacher on TV, and he said one right there. I said, that's one right there. He said, uh, uh, all hell broke out last night. What, what did he mean? We would know that we wouldn't have to go into any kind of uh, detail to explain what that would mean, right? What would that mean to you, Kenny? Yeah, trouble broke out is, is uh, chaos. chaos. You know, that's, that's an adage. So Jesus uses these adages or these fictitious stories that they're all, they're all used to and they can, they can know what it means. And he said, another parable put he forth, the kingdom of heaven is like a grain of mustard seed which a man took and sowed in his field, which indeed is the least of all seeds. But when it is grown, it is greatest among herbs and becometh a tree, so that the birds of the air come and lodge in the branches thereof. Now, how does that relate to the kingdom of God? He said the kingdom of God, or he used kingdom of heaven, is like a seed. Any, any comments? How would that be likened to a, the kingdom of God that we've been teaching? He said it was like that. It grows. That's a big point. It grows. As we said earlier, look in the news. You watch the news, we have doubts the kingdom's working. But it's growing. It started as a seed. But I want to point out something here. Jesus is really talking about himself. The kingdom of God is like a grain of mustard seed which a man took and sowed in his field which indeed is the least of all seeds. Um, I believe one of the places in Scripture talks about him being the least, grew to be the greatest. He was the seed that was sown in the field. But that seed, the people didn't realize it's important. Our three wise men got a revelation and they followed the, the star and went to worship him, right? But the people in general had no idea this little guy is born down here in a manger what he really is. Did Mark Lowry write that song, Mary, did you know? What are some of the words of that? Did you know that you were kissing the, when you kissed your baby, you was kissing the face of God? What were some of those words? Do you remember know that song? He would someday walk on water. He, yeah, he would say, do you want walk on water. He'd walk on water. All, all those things. That's a great rendition of, of Jesus. But people didn't realize when he was born down in the stable that's who this little kid, this baby was. Now, another parable. Another fictitious story that's uh, of common language says the kingdom of God is likened to leaven which a woman took and hid in three measures of meal till the whole was what? Leaven. Now, I think there's something significant about the three. I'm not sure I know, but I know this much. There was three, there was seven feasts, but three gatherings, Feast of Passover, Pentecost, and Tabernacle. And I don't know if it's, it's referring to that or not, but the kingdom of heaven, there's nothing insignificant in Scripture. But what I want you to see, the kingdom of heaven is likened to leaven, which a woman took and hid in three measures of meal, till the whole was leavened. Till the whole thing was leavened. And the kingdom of God, or the kingdom of heaven, is like leaven. Now who's the whole is talking about? 
Huh? There you go. It's all of creation God's involved in that. All of creation is the whole, wouldn't it? He said, the kingdom of God is like a woman that put leaven in three measures of meal till the whole was leavened. The kingdom of God works that way. You may not see it yet. That's why I think the Lord put my heart to keep before you guys all the time. What can you believe that's inconceivable at this time? What can you see? I was just thinking this morning in the shower. What if some ISIS guy had a child that was really bad, was ready to die, and some Christian laid hands on him and was healed? Can we, we're so against ISIS, we can't conceive something like that happen, right? <coughs> we ought to start conceiving something like that. Because it's like leaven, it's working. All we want to do is kill them. And I don't know any, I don't know what to say about that. I just know the kingdom of God is going to work until the whole creation knows God. I'm talking about Allah. And I'm talking about it. I believe what we're getting too many mixed, mixed things. I've heard about ten speeches from those people. And I tell you what I heard, I'll never say, I'll as God again. I've just went through a change in my mind the last month on that. But what I heard them say, it's not the same. God of creation, the architect of life, let me say it way, is about loving you, not killing you. That's a mixed uh, what can I say? It's a mixture. Thank you, Holy Ghost. It's a mixture. And I, I don't want a mixture in me. I want what I have to be pure life. So I have repented from that. Now, I used to say, you know, they just say Allah. It's because that's all they know and probably is. But with the ten speeches I listened to, I... I have come to the conclusion that's not God, the architect of life. Or any other term that we use is not the architect of life. Because God's not about killing you anymore. He's about killing stuff in you that's not of him. I just want to say this. Uh, this came to me in my study time. I think this is one reason why... God was against mixed races in the Old Testament. It's because races that had no idea of, about, of God, when they would marry them, they'd bring that mixture to them and taint the purity of God that they had learned. So, uh, that's not the case today. The crucifixion took care of so much of that stuff. Anyway, so... Uh, Oh yeah, verse uh, 33. Let's go to 44. Again, the kingdom of, God, of, of heaven is like unto a treasure hid in the field, the which when a man hath found, he hideth, and for joy thereof goeth and selleth all that he hath and buyeth the field. Now, I want to tell you how I used to look at that. I don't know where you fit in there, but I felt, I, I preached this for a lot of years. Once I understand and find Jesus, I sell all that I've got to get him. I've changed. I've repented of that one too. <laughs> Why did the Lord just take this thing? So many changes, you know. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like the treasure hidden in the field. Guess who the treasure is? It's creation. Creation. I've just been, I've been, um, what's the word? Just within a week, I've been um, condemned or. No, I've been. No, it's worse than that. It's harassed, sort of, by people that think I have to. 
what I have to teach and what I can't, can and can't teach. I have a greater vision of how God sees creation. The other folks think i got to tell how bad they are. And I have chosen to tell how God sees you. That doesn't mean their actions are, are corresponding. I mean, what they're doing is corresponding. Are you with me? Am, am I, do I need to explain that more? But God sees them through what Jesus did. So that's why I, I was scolded for, for talking about God consciousness. For many years I, I was devil conscious, <laughs> darkness conscious. You know, most of you know that without a teaching, don't you? I bet Mike knows it without being taught. He knows things that lead him the wrong way. No one knows what leads him the wrong way. But if you don't know there's a better way, you just, you're in limbo. <coughs> hoping for the best. Right? So I try to teach people to be God conscious. Be ever aware of God. Know that God is in you. That doesn't mean we've repented. Doesn't mean we've changed our mind. Doesn't mean we're walking in salvation. I think that that, that leaven in that lump is working to bring us to that. But, the, but when Jesus died on the cross, he died for all of us. ISIS even. You know, I, can't, I couldn't get by that little church in America. Well, in America I couldn't. But probably around here I couldn't. Because they'd be saying, I'm sympathetic to them. I'm not. I think what they're doing is wrong. I think it's evil. It's not from God. It's terrible. It's horrendous. But Jesus still died for them. Just like he died for me. Doesn't make them holy. Doesn't make them godly just because I said that. I think their ways are very, very evil. Can I hear an amen? amen? Very evil. But God didn't leave them out on the cross. That's my point. So the kingdom of God is like a treasure hid in the field. We're the treasure. When I say we, you know I'm not talking about us here at this church exclusively. I'm talking about the whole world, the uh, human race. Let me say it that way. That's the treasure. The which when a man hath found, he hideth, and for joy goeth and selleth all that he hath, and does what? Buyeth. The field. What's another word for buyeth? Purchase. Isn't it, isn't it amazing that in the scripture he said he purchased us with his own blood? He bought us. I mean, when we were ugly. When we're still sinning, put us, put us in the case of ISIS, when we're still killing folks, thinking we're doing God a favor, he still died for them. Does it make it right? Does it make them right? Does it make them holy? It, it's awful. It's horrendous. It's ter terrible. Whatever other adjectives you can put in there. But God still died for them. So he, he saw the world... And for a, for a period of time, it looked like he hid. But it wasn't the plan of God all the while to purchase somebody. And all through the Old Testament, God began to show signs and symbols and types and shadows of all of that coming to pass. For instance, when they put the blood over the door in, in Egypt over, and over the door and on the signpost. We didn't find out till hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years later when John, Jesus said in the book of John, I am the door. Oh, we go back to that. Not only put the blood over the door, but on both sides. And so if Jesus is the door, the blood's on both sides. Amen? It rolled all the way back to Adam. Went all the way back to the newest baby born a while ago. Amen? So he hideth. For a while it seemed like this redemption is not working. But for joy thereof goeth and selleth all that he had. Jesus gave everything he was 
to buy back everything that Adam gave over to the devil. He, let me use this word, redeemed us. Amen. He redeemed us. us Hallelujah. Redeemed us back. Oh, we have what verse 40. Again, verse 45. The kingdom of God is likened to a merchant man seeking goodly pearls. Who, when he had found one pearl of great price, went and sold all that he had and bought it. Again, I used to think, he's the pearl of great price. I began to see that humanity is the pearl. Man, you know, it's very clear. The Bible says, when we were in our sins and trespasses, that's when he reconciled us. Not when we said, Lord, I'm sorry. I mean, I'm for that. I think that's wonderful. If we ever get a new church built, we're going to have some altars. I think it's good for, for kids to see their mom and dads at the altar. I think it's good for mom and dad to see their kids at the altar. I'm not against that. But the real altar is in here. That's just the tithe. It's good for them to see the tithe, too, for that matter. But the real altar is here. There's been many persons that altar is driving down the road. Just seeing their ways were against God and repented, driving down the road. Remember uh, Hugh Smith? He'd been hearing something about the Holy Ghost. And he said, "I'm dri He's an airlines pilot for Brandon Airlines, and he said, "I'm driving down to my home and after my flight, and I'm in my little uh, my little BMW convertible. And I stop at the light, had my top down, had the music going, bam, bam, bam." And he said. I just said, Lord, if this Holy Ghost is for me, I want it. He said, I just stuck up both hands right there at the red light. And he said, I started speaking in tongues. And he said, the light turned green. I got one hand down the wheel. I just kept speaking in tongues. You know, so you don't have to be in a church building. Amen? It can be anywhere's your altar, wherever you make that. Amen? But again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant man seeking goodly pearls. And when he had found one pearl of great price, went and sold all that he had, there's that word bought or purchased it. Verse 47. And the kingdom of heaven is likened to a net that was cast in the sea and gathered of, every, gathered of every kind, which when it was full, they drew up to shore and sat down and gathered the good into the vessels, but cast the bad away. So shall it be at the end of the world. So, what all I've been telling you is wrong then. I think. If you think like you used to think, you could say, what you've been saying, Brother Mike, is not true because of this. First of all, you've got to understand the word, word world here is age. So there were some things coming right after this. As Jesus was preaching and teaching them. It's going to happen he even said, there's things happening. If you're on your housetop, you better not come down for your stuff. You better head to the hills. If you're in the field, don't run home to get anything. Head to the hills. Because he was predicting the, the overthrow of Jerusalem, which was at 70 AD. That's when this was talking about. Well, it says, the angel would come forth and sever the wicked from among the just. What was happening was the coming of the Lord in judgment to them. Remember, Jesus not crucified yet. There was still that judgment time. And all through the Old Testament, there was judgment time on the people who disobeyed God, and sometimes thousands of them were killed in battle. So until, up, up until this time, that's what was still happening. This, this judgment w was uh, coming... Uh, Joyce, do you know in time frame what this would be like until 70 AD? 70 AD is not too far in the future, right? Right. From what? This? It's within that generation. Within that generation, okay. And sever the wicked among the just, and shall cast them into a furnace of fire. There shall be wailing and gnashing of teeth. Now the fire was the fire that, matter of fact, it says that the uh, Jerusalem going to be so overflown and be overthrown, it'd be like a plowed field. That's what the prophet prophesied. And I guess the wailing wall is the only part of that whole uh, 
Herod's temple was still left standing. Everything else was so destroyed it was like a plowed field. And history of me tells us that the Christian people that had, had really <coughs> believed in Christ was the ones that got out. They never lost their lives. So that's what it's talking about here. But the kingdom is constantly, constantly working. Now, how do I arrive at Christ buying the whole field? Or how do I equate the pearl of great Christ being the entire human race? I'll show you with about five scriptures. 1 Corinthians chapter 6. 1 Corinthians chapter 6. In verse 14. 6, 14. Uh, and God hath both raised up the Lord and will also raise up uh, uh, us by his own power. Know you not that your bodies are the members of Christ, Shall I then take the members of Christ and make them members of, of a harlot? God forbid. What? Know ye not that he that which is joined to a harlot is one body? For two saith he shall be one flesh. But he that is joined unto the Lord is what? One spirit. one spirit. Flee fornication. Every sin that a man doeth without is without the body. But he that committeth fornication sin, sinneth against his own body. What? Know ye not that your body is the temple of what? The Holy Ghost, which is in you, which ye have of God, and ye are not your own, for you are you are bought. You've been you were biased. <laughs> you were bought. You bought. You were bought. Bought with a price. Therefore, because of that, glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. Look at Acts chapter twenty. Is that Acts chapter twenty. Verse 28, I believe. <coughs> uh, take heed, therefore, unto yourselves and to all the flock, to all the flock over which the Holy Ghost has made you overseers, to feed the church of God, which he has purchased with his own blood. Now, he said, feed the church of God. Set together. Feed the church of God. The church comes from a uh, Greek word, ecclesia or ecclesia, you can pronounce it either way, which means called out ones. Who's not been called out? I thought he's talking about just the people that come to church. But this building is not the church. If you ever see a church of Christ, they have it right on their sign. It says this is where the church meets. If we didn't have a building, the church is still intact, right? And that's you. That's other folks who've been who've acknowledged Jesus as their Lord and Savior. But the church is really everybody's been called out. And I'm going to say it this way: it's the whole human race. Feed them, which he had purchased with his own blood. Now that here's here's one that's going to really knock your hat and creep. It did mine. Second Peter two. Man, this is so stout. It's so stout I don't want to believe it. <laughs> that's that's why when I first read this one time, I just <laughs> he Second Peter chapter two. Uh, I'm first Peter. I want to do this right. Second Peter, verse chapter two. All right, you got that. Well, verse 1 and 2. All right. Or verse 1. Just verse 1. But there are, were false prophets also among the people, even as there shall be false teachers among you, who privately bring in damnable heresies, even denying the Lord. You finish it. You get that? Yeah. Even denying the Lord. He bought them too. The ones that deny the Lord. He bought them too. Now, just because he bought them doesn't mean they're acting right. It doesn't mean they're operating uh, godly. It doesn't mean that they're doing the right things. It doesn't mean that they're holy. It doesn't mean any of that. But they've still been purchased. That's my point. He purchased those who's, who's teaching heresies and 
ungodly things and, and even denying the Lord, he bought them too. Man, I didn't want to believe that. I just didn't want to believe that for a long time. But I had to come to grips with that. That all these ungodly people, he bought them. Let me say it another way. He redeemed them. You guys will let me get by with this. I'm going to go step way out of the box. <laughs> he redeemed them. So even though they're wicked, even though they're teaching denying the Lord, that's about as backwards as you can get, we preach honoring the Lord. He said even the people are denying the Lord. They are redeemed. Oh, that's going to take some repenting. Repenting means just change our mind. Because those guys, I want to hit the brick. My flesh would rather say, you're going to hell, and I like it because you're going to hell. Because I think they deserve it. That's good. It seems fair. But God is more than fair. He is full of mercy. He is merciful. That's not to say these people are saints. It's not to say they're godly. I'm just going to keep him sharing that because I don't want anybody to leave and Brother Mike said, oh, everybody's going to heaven. I didn't say that. Which I believe they will in the end, but I ain't got that far with it. But anyway, I'm telling you, he bought them. Second Peter 1 said the, the guys that are teaching heresies, that's what ISIS is. And a lot of people among them, they had visions of, if I could just kill this many infidels, I'd go to heaven and have seven, 70 virgins or whatever. 72. Oh, is it 72? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> whatever. Even though they think that, God has still purchased them. That's why I say the kingdom of God is like leaven. It's still working. It may have got, gotten to them yet, but it's working. Somebody's going to have to have an inconceivable idea that somebody in their ranks is going to be touched by the Holy Ghost. And their life changes. It just takes one of those gurus to affect a lot of other people in that same realm. But as long, again, I don't know what the answer is, physically. But as long as all we got in our mind is kill, somehow or another, we've got to work in there. God, you, you work over and above all of that. Work over and above all of that. We see that they've been redeemed. They don't know that. They don't see that. They think their holy book tells them to kill them. I want to tell you something. Our holy book says to love. Amen. Amen. It says to love. Even says love your enemies. Now, that's a stretch for me. I'm just honest. It's a stretch. I, sh I sure can't say I like them. <laughs> you don't have to like them now. Well, maybe it's true. But I, the love of God in me. Let me say it that way. My unrenewed mind wants to hate. But the more my mind gets renewed on the Word of God, the Bible says, Be not conformed to this world, but be transformed. How? By the renewing of our mind that you can prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. When our mind gets renewed to what God says about everybody, they have already been purchased. We ought to just so speak to, you know, when we move to... Uh, the trailer park, 1988. I was in Southport. I watched folks coming. I seen something on TV. They were just blaspheming God and all that stuff. And I don't, I don't know who it was. Even why I was even listening to it. But I went over to TV and I just put my hand on TV and I said, "I just call you into the kingdom." 
I call you in Now, I could say a lot of other things. I curse you in the name of Jesus. You know? But I said, I call you in the kingdom. I said to my family, I said, you know, it may take 10 years, but 10 years from now, we may be seeing those people preaching the gospel. Because somebody took time to call them. Now, they must don't know I even exist. Or my family exists. But God knows in his powerful words. So, every time you see ISIS, call them in the kingdom. Because they've already been bought. And person, they just don't know it. The people you don't like in office, they've been bought too. They've been purchased too. Amen. Right? They've been purchased too. They've been influenced by wrong people. That caused them to make decisions that are against this book, but they've still been purchased. Uh, Joyce, I'll give you a little, a little uh, assignment here while I'm speaking. That find the scripture that talks about the Scythians and the barbarians, one of Pauline epistles. I know you can find that verse for me. I, I it keeps coming up in my spirit, so I know I need to say something about it. Look at Hebrews 8 11. Hebrews 8 11. Do you understand, let me ask you something real seriously. Do you understand why this message is not real, real uh, popular? Because it don't build a following. But I'm not after a following, I'm after building the kingdom of God. And teaching truth to the best that's been revealed to me. And I haven't, I haven't, I don't know it all. There's a floor that I don't know than what I know, but what I know is getting to be fun, getting to be joyful. Um, verse 11. And they shall teach every man, and they shall not teach every man his neighbor and every man his brother, saying, Know the Lord, for all shall know me from least to the greatest. And that's in the Bible. Oh my gosh. The kingdom of God is not like a nation. It's not ruled like that. It's ruled from within. And the Ada Odell story just come up. I'm going to give you a prime example of how the spirit works. Let me ask you first. How many of you have been doing something uh, outside of the, the church meetings, maybe home or working on your farm or in house or doing dishes or and the Lord just put somebody on your heart. How many have, have that happen? See, about all of you have had that. Okay. And that's not just to stop me cooking. Pray for them. And pray for them until you have a release. It might be three minutes. It might be ten. Aid Odell, which is our church at Salem, got to church Salem. you got to know her. She just point blank and blood, ain't she? She don't mess around with the word. She said, I mean, it's like this. What was you doing Thursday? I said, Thursday? You put me on the spot. I couldn't think what I was doing Thursday. She said, well, I was canning corn and green beans, and I didn't have time to pray for you. <coughs> and she's about as country as they get. And she said, the Lord spoke to me and said, shut the pressure cookers off and pray for Mike. I didn't want to do that because I'm in the middle of canning beans and, and corn and I didn't have time to fool with praying for you, but I did. Now, what was happening? <laughs> and I, David, I couldn't pray. And I thought, the rest, that Sunday afternoon and Monday, I thought, what was that? And about Tuesday, it occurred to me. I was facing a temptation I could have went either way. And I went the way of the Lord. You know who pulled me through that decision? It was how the kingdom of God works. Yes. A lady who's living down on a river canning corn and green beans was able to hear the voice of the Lord and took time to pray. And she prayed me through that decision that I didn't know anything about. That's the kingdom of God. 
The kingdom of God is within you and it works by the Spirit. It's not offensive. Your politics are different than mine. I can't get offended at you. Amen. We have little things offend us. So little things offend us. We've got to have skin like a rhinoceros and just let things bounce off. And, you know, I just, like I said, I went through a scolding here lately about some things. And I just, we, Linda and I really prayed about this. I said, Lord, I don't want a mixture. I don't want a mixture. I want to be as pure as I can be before you. I don't want a mixture. I don't want a little bit of this, a little bit of that. It taints my word. I tell singers when you get up here to sing, make sure you ain't been in a fight with your spouse. Because it taints you what you say and what you pray and what you sing. It taints it. If <clears throat> you've been mad at your spouse, get it taken care of before you get to church. There have been times when I had to join hands on the way to church and just say, Lord, forgive us. I ain't getting up there with that in my gut. Pardon me. I can't. I get tongue-tied. <laughs> Amen? Amen? Sometimes I want to hit her as a brick, but that, that ain't what works. And most times it's probably my fault. But from my perspective, that's what I think. So I've got to deal with those things. And you know, the quicker you can deal with them, the better it is. The better you can, you can get on with life. Life is too short at its best. To let little things mess us up. Amen? Amen. Alright, 2 Thessalonians, we we'll want to just say. 2 Thessalonians 2. Say that you follow in the Bible. Second Thessalonians 2, verse 7. I could say a lot about this, these verses right here, but I just want to mention something. It says, For the mystery of iniquity that already worked, only he who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. When people do not listen to the Holy Spirit, and that voice of the Holy Spirit is. And as Lou Lively used to tell me, it's this small, slender voice of the Spirit that you've got to be quiet to hear it sometimes. I, and we get so busy asking God for things that we forget to just listen to that still, small voice. He says, the mystery of iniquity has already worked. In other words, it's not coming in 2025, 2015. The mystery of iniquity is already at work. And now, if, if we knew what it was, it wouldn't be a mystery, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> but the Bible teaches it is given us for us to know, Paul said it's given for us to know the mysteries of the kingdom of God. So if it's for us to know, when I read that, I said, huh? -uh. I just said that loud. I said, huh? -uh. I don't know what they are. And I didn't. Talked about the mystery of God, the mystery of iniquity, the mystery of this, the mystery of the kingdom, all of that. And I, I said, mm -mm, I don't know what they are. So I had to do what? Study. To find it. The mystery of iniquity. You see, it works when we don't listen to God. I want to, I want to unravel that for you. And when you get tired of being sick and tired, of being sick and tired of having whatever, things you don't need in your life, and you can't get a, a, you just it just keeps coming back and haunting you and you just keep doing it over and over and over. The mystery of iniquity is going to work until you say, I give. It'd be easier to listen to the voice of the Spirit and just stop. But I've been guilty of some things, just doing it and doing it and doing it and doing it and doing it until I finally say, this is a dead end street. This, this ain't taking me no place. I ain't going any place with this. And finally you just say, I give. 
that's what the mystery of iniquity is doing. It's working. It's helping God out, so to speak. You're already redeemed, but you're still acting ugly. <laughs> still acting ugly. So, ugly is going to keep working until you finally say, I'm tired of that. And I want to give my life to the Lord. You may be saved as saved can be. You may have knelt at the altar and accepted Jesus, and so you're walking in your salvation, but there's one other in your life. You know, the Bible says, lay aside every sin and weight that does so easily beset us. There's something, probably in everybody, in all of us, one little thing that could easily beset us. I don't know what it is that turns Kenny off. I don't know what it is, one little thing that makes him so mad. Oh, that's <laughs> I don't know what those things are, Brian, or Tim, or David, but I've got them too. And I have to lay them aside. Because, given I want to tell them off. <laughs> I want to tell them where the cows are grazing. I want to tell them how the buck, uh, the bear got in the buck with those all adages, you know. <laughs> you know what they mean. I want to tell them off. I want to tell them, after all, I had a right. No, we're supposed to be dead in Christ. If we're dead in Christ, we don't have to go through all that, you know. You don't have to to uh, prop yourself up. Amen. God's in you. Amen. Amen. The kingdom of God is working in the lives of the entire human race. I just want to end with these last three words. God always wins. Absolutely. Amen. God always wins. So we got to look at that in every aspect of life in your own and everybody else too. God always wins. He wins in your kids. He wins in your parents. He wins in the people you work with. Maybe not at the same rate. The Bible says every man in his own order. Did you find that scripture? Yes. Good. It's Colossians 3.11. Colossians. I do want to... Let's start with verse 9. Uh, Colossians. That's New Testament. Colossians chapter 3. Thank you. Good little bell. Chapter 3. Verse 9. Thank you. That's very good. You got it for the screen there, reading it. Okay. Verse 9. <coughs> lie, lie not one to another, seeing that you have put off the old man with his deeds. Lie, you can't do that. And have put on the new man, which is renewed in knowledge, after the image of him that created him. Yeah. Where there is neither Greek nor Jew. <coughs> Circumcision nor uncircumcision. Barbarian, Scythian, bond nor free. I'm going to stop before I read the last six words. Scythians, according to Dr. Harold Lovelace, he said, I just wondered about that and I did some research. He said, Scythians were people that never even really had a language. So they were un- knowledgeable. Could we say that? Barbarians are pretty well self-explanatory. They're pretty unknowledgeable too. So it says, whether it's neither Greek nor Jew, circumcision or uncircumcision, barbarian, Scythian, bond or free, but Christ is what? All. And what? In all. And in all. <coughs> I rest my case. Whether I like it or not, that's what the scripture says. I've got to stick with that. Okay. Yeah. Um, and I think this is for you. Okay. But when we think about it, and they're living in a BC before Christ, uh, jihad mentality. Right. So are the old Christians who are harassing you. Oh, yeah. And it's not because they're evil, it's because they mm. don't understand. That's true. That's very good. I need to hear that. And, and, but the purpose for you. Is that they want you to teach the old news, which is that people sin, and you're teaching the good news, and you're teaching the good news. Right. Thank you. Brian, you had your hand up while we go. I was on a, a trailer, and I hate to stop it. You know, right. And I understand that. And I, I don't want to sit where they can hear it, but 
uh, I think it's important, but um, it, it come to me so strongly. <laughs> you know, I want to love everyone the same as best that I can, and I, I'm, I'm not a winner at that yet, you know, but I think I'm getting better. And something that I want to share this morning that I feel like is an accomplishment, you know, in me. Sometimes I feel like I fail and I'm, I'm not there yet. But yet, to me, it was something so silly, you know. But yet, my wife was afraid that I would probably lose it with her, you know. But I noticed this morning she had her phone turned upside down. And I thought, why? I flipped it over and it was shattered. And she was hiding it from me, you know? <laughs> and I thought, it makes me feel bad that she would be afraid that I would get mad at her or something like that. And I feel like, Lord, you have done something in me because I didn't fail her, you know? And this isn't really what I was wanting to share that Mike was showing us was, but I think in some ways it's similar. Because of all people, we would really think horrible, horrible that deny God, right? And I, I really love Peter as much as I probably love Paul, and I think he was a wonderful man of God, that he served God, even though he even had weaknesses and faults. He, he says that, you know, in his words that he shared with us, that Peter denied God three times. Judas, <laughs> you think of that book that was wrote, you know, by that brother up in Iowa, right? You know how bad he felt? He took his own life. Peter probably felt the same way as Judas and probably wanted to take it. But God loved him so much, you know, that he wasn't, it wasn't his time. But he told Peter he would give his life willingly for him someday. That's just what I wanted to say is that, you know, at the time, we could probably think of a lot of horrible people, you know, but Peter denied him three times, you know. I'm cussed first. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. Anybody else have a comment? Yes, I do. Okay. Go up here, Carol. Well, we know that the Father is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And a minute ago when you mentioned Paul, let's take a, back, a look back at the Damascus Road. Who was number one enemy of God? Okay, now let's take a look at ISIS. And the same experience that happened to Paul, you know, that changed him from who he was to who he is, and still is. That can happen That's right. to have, ISIS. To start God yeah. can change their, them and turn them around. Given them that straight street experience. Yeah. They were blind, like, like, that's what they are. They're blind, just like Paul was Saul, and he was blind when he was Saul. Now, he's able to turn them around. And he was going to. So we just have to claim that and believe it's going to happen. And it will. Very good. That's a very good analogy. And Paul had the paper. He was carrying the paper from the, chief, the high priest that said he could go harass the church. And whip them and beat them and put them in prison and all of that. So it's no different. It's the same scenarios, same, uh, what's the word? Same mentality, yeah. So, but, and I'm not saying ISIS is good. I'm saying they're very, and I'm not for them, but I'm for them in the spirit. I'm for what, what, uh, we've got to think things way out of the box. Amen. We've got to think things that probably other Christians are not thinking right now. That they're still redeemed. And I don't know what they got to do change what you know I can't even formulate something to, to work make it work so I don't try to but I just know God's bigger than they are Amen. Amen. we've got to stop some some think mass 
murders that's going on, I think we need to stop that and whatever we need to do. But God is bigger than the, the things that's happening. Okay? Is that, is that understood? Y'all understand I'm not for, for ISIS and their, their habits and what they're doing. I just don't want you to go and leave and say, oh, Brother Mike thinks they're all right. No, 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 no. I think they're terrible. Their ways are terrible. Let me say that way. They have no clue that they're, that they're redeemed. Because I love what you said. The old idea is Old Testament. Yes, no matter what it is. It's Old Testament theology, Old Testament thinking. Because God, you, people disobey them. God just sent the enemy nation to, take, to kill them. A lot of them would kill them and take the rest of them in captivity, in captivity. But since the resurrection, that isn't how it works. And I can go take you to the book of Hebrews and show you that he took away that old cup to establish the new one. It's taken away. It's not in existence. We still can look, glean from it. We still see types and shadows, signs and symbols that point us to Christ. Amen. But nobody's interested in the New Testament in killing somebody. That's good. If we quit looking to, for people to hate, that's the less resistance that they would have. Amen. You just get gooder and gooder out here. Amen. God bless you. Write this down somewhere that you won't forget it. Should we have a bad storm and you wonder whether we're going to have church or not, we're now hooked up with Channel 5. So you can look at that. We're going to have church or not. We're going to try to get, get in with Channel 4 as well. But uh, we, you've got to, I have to take uh, papers that shows that I'm a pastor. I got to take a light bill and I got to get uh, letters that's got my name on it as pastor and I got to prove to them, you know, through a lot of different ways. So, and then they give us a special code. So, you know,